You're on. All right, so for the sake of the video, my name is Jonathan Coonan. I'm a incoming sophomore at Bainbridge High School and a volunteer with BCB at the high school branch, especially the radio club there. And this right here, what you can see on the screen, is a program called Aphonic. Now, I'm running Windows 7, so you can see that. Hmm? Audacity. Audacity, excuse me. What did I say? Aphonic. Aphonic. Um, it runs on Windows 7, it runs on Linux, it runs on uh, Mac, it runs on pretty much everything. It's free, open source, and really ugly, which is why a lot of people prefer Logic and GarageBand. Um, there's, so what I'll be talking about is not just about off or excuse me, Audacity, but just also some stuff that applies to Logic and to GarageBand. Um, everyone here has worked a VCR at some point in their life, right? Okay, so this operates under some similar logic. There is a rewind button, a fast forward button, a stop button, a play button, a pause button, and the new addition, a record button, which is how we would record something from a microphone over there onto the screen here, so, and be able to play it back. And this looks really confusing, and I totally get that, because it is, but it's really simple to use once you know all like the tools that you need to have at your disposal. So aside from headphones and a microphone, this is the, a computer loaded with this is technically all you need to make podcasts. Uh, I guess I should start with working around the interface. You can zoom in with buttons on the side. Uh, same thing with Logic and GarageBand. There's buttons that allow you to zoom. Audacity is really great because it will allow you to zoom all the way to the microsecond, which is one millionth of a second. So right here is about, this space here that I've selected is about two microseconds, give or take a bit, which is an insanely tiny amount of time. And because you can get down to that, yeah, you can actually see these little dots here. You can sort of draw with these and change the sound as you like. It's a very, very, very powerful program. However, we don't really use it like that. We use the more cut and paste options. Uh, there's a selection tool up here which allows you to delete stuff. So now when I start playing, instead of hearing a four second pause, I just hear. You can also, uh, this is a similar thing that we do in almost all of our editing is when a person isn't speaking, we cut them out, we make their stuff silent, so you won't be able to hear the difference here. But there's a very big difference in hearing just a person talking and a person talking and the room echo from another person's mic. So you can go onto that level. It operates like most programs with the basic keyboard shortcuts of undo, cut, paste, etc. Um, a really common thing that we do, that we do with every podcast, is we drop in another file that has a intro, for instance. So right now I already have two tracks, but what I can do is, if I can find it, I can drop in a third track, which would be the intro music for our What's Up podcast. So this is audio from a What's Up podcast from about two weeks ago on the local bookstore, uh, Eagle Harbor Books, their Waldo uh, Where's Waldo finding contest, I believe. Uh, Might be under W for what? Oh, yep, that's it. It's the it's the 22nd one. Yep. So you can just drag and drop this in. And because, funnily enough, so you can see individually here, there are these two tracks. Each one is a mono track, meaning it has, it's not stereo. If you listen to it with just one earbud or one side of the headphones, it will sound exactly the same as if you put on both. The wub is stereo, which means that you can hear it from both sides. That's a very important difference. difference. And you can see that it is stereo because it's larger. It has two sides to it, one being the left, one being the right side to it. So something that we do quite, quite often is we would have, so let's see. Over here we have Chani, the host of the podcast, Victoria, the guest of the podcast. So what we would do is we would, dang it, we would take these two tracks and shift them over a bit using the shift tool. So maybe about four seconds usually. Gotta keep them in sync. 
you, they sort of magnetically lock in sync. You can see with the yellow line there. And the intro goes in, intro starts about four seconds later. We have it, using this tool over here, we have it quiet down a bit. So about here. You can see now, this is the equivalent of that 45 angle slice Barry was talking about earlier. You, when you're actually cutting tape, this is sort of the equivalent. We're slowly cutting it out through the use, oh, through the use of these right here. So Logic and GarageBand have a similar tool that allows you to sort of uh, set where you want the the maximum level to be and it quiets it down based on that and you can set it in sections. So now when I play it, instead of just being full blast for 20 seconds this music, it'll play for about 4 seconds and then quiet down a bit. Oh, didn't go back to the start. There we go. This is not as quiet as it should be, but I digress. Um, Audacity also has a nice multi-tool function that allows you to use a bunch of different tools in one based on where you're clicking. Uh, but other than that, they're really, really quite similar to Logic and GarageBand. You notice on Logic, it had a similar multi-track uh, multi layout, different bars for stereo, although we didn't really mess with that. Uh, yeah, there's not really a whole lot more other than that you can change with stereo stuff with panning. So you can say, I want it to play more on the left as opposed to more on the right. Um, mute and solo. Solo means you're wanting only that track to play. And mute is you want not that track not to play, if that makes sense. There's not a whole lot to Audacity, really. It's extremely powerful and just it's bare simplicity. Um, although they certainly could use a UI upgrade. <laughs> And one nice thing is that we have volunteers who compose music for us. Although yes, the music. Imagine that many radio stations might go to New York to a studio to get a, a piece of opening music, closing music, and we happily have some volunteers who play guitar and play ukulele and compose that opening music for our WhatsApp broadcast. Yeah. So it was very good. Question? Yeah. Um, do you typically mix in stereo or do you mix in a mono? Um, I believe everything that we record is by default in mono. Yeah, we, we've been advised that for, since most people listen to podcasts on devices that don't avail themselves of much stereo separation, that mono gives you a smaller file, smaller file size, and therefore an easier download when you're in a place like Bainbridge Island and has... Yeah. So, so your, your final result is next to mono? We yes. Mono. Okay. Yeah, to keep the file size small. Also, a difference, this is I just remembered, a difference between Logic and GarageBand besides features is Logic is more geared to people who want to record podcasts or record music, whereas GarageBand is built for people who want to make music. There's a lot of built-in synths, a virtual keyboard that can be played with your actual keyboard sitting in front of you. Um, yeah, it's generally geared towards people who, it's a, it's garage band, it's called band for a reason. So it's more for people who want to make music than do what we do, although it works very well for doing what we do. One of the breakthroughs of our organization was to use the features of the cloud to enable our volunteers to do a lot of their work from home. So when we produce something in the studio, the last thing the host does is drags those WAV files up to the cloud, up in our case to Google Drive. And Google Drive, because we're a nonprofit, has given us all this storage space for free. So we drag these big files up to Google Drive. And then our editor may be somebody like Tim working at home in Suquamish, or it may be Jonathan working at home. And so each person working at home can use whatever editing software they like the best. They're not confined by having to go to the studio or use what's in the studio. And so that distributed approach means that an editor can do the work, put it back up on the cloud. A publisher editor comes along, like me, takes that edited audio, puts in the text, puts in the pictures, and publishes it through Libsyn. So a lot of our work is done away from the studio in a way that you couldn't have done 10 years ago. 
Yeah, I actually use a program for my editing called um, Audition, which is an Adobe program. It works very similarly to Photoshop. There's a number of reasons I like it. It's not available for free, so we don't like we don't ask people to pay money. That's an important thing. That's why we have Audacity and we have GarageBand available for use. It's because they're free. Depending on the operating system you use, you have to buy GarageBand if you're on Windows. I don't even think you can run it actually on Windows. I, anyways, um, well, you so have been very patient. Yeah. And it's after after four. I don't want to f make you feel confined, but we're we're here to answer any questions and. Um, Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Very nice. yeah. I, actually, I've got to take off pretty soon, yeah, but I had a question. If, if you listen to like an NPR program, you don't have to know you're listening to NPR to know you're listening to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. of a certain style. Do you, style do you do anything like that for BCB where you have like a style book or something? We do have a policy manual, but it falls short of being a style book of the kind you're referring to because uh, in the world of podcasting, a 